Welcome to Installation and Maintenance of Health IT Systems, Structured Systems Analysis and Design. This is Unit 4. This component covers fundamentals of selection, installation, and maintenance of typical electronic health records EHR systems. This unit will discuss generalities about project management along with the role of the project manager. It will also cover in some detail the various components of a typical project plan and how to design a project plan for a typical EHR system. The selection, installation and adoption of a new health IT system is a major undertaking, requiring the talents and coordination of many people in order to ensure success. Today's lecture will outline steps used in successfully managing such an undertaking from start to finish. The objectives for this unit are to identify the eight basic components to a project plan, define the role of a project manager, equate the basic project plan components to a typical EHR implementation plan, create a project plan for system design and implementation, Project management can be defined as a carefully planned and organized effort to accomplish a specific and usually one-time objective. There are several facets to successfully managing any project, including developing the plan and managing its implementation, along with the various controls put into place to ensure that performance is sustained and that objective timelines can be adequately met being able to adjust the plan for any errors or unforeseen circumstances while ensuring the overall success of the project. And lastly, once the project implementation is complete, being able to measure the success outcomes in relation to the project expectations in some sort of quantifiable way. A project is usually defined in phases. The number and types of phases are solely dependent on the project at hand. However, some of the more common phases include determining feasibility, the process of determining if undertaking the project will net beneficial outcomes for the organization as a whole, definition and determining the scope of the project, who is affected by the project, both directly or indirectly, who will be involved with the project, what other factors are relevant to the success of the project, the project planning phase, developing a roadmap for project success as well as tools for measuring that success when completed. The project implementation phase, actually doing the work. Evaluation and support and maintenance, determining the project's net benefit to the organization and putting in place processes to ensure longevity. As this picture suggests, Successful project management means effectively balancing the components of time, cost, scope, quality, and expectations, each having a symbiotic relationship as represented by the diamond shape in the center. This is referred to in project management circles as the project diamond. The concept is quite simple. When a user requests an additional report, not originally agreed on in the project specifications, the project's scope and quality change, resulting in an imbalance and skewing the shape of the diamond unless changes in the remaining components are made to bring the project back on track. We refer to this relationship as the project diamond. Every project needs someone who can lead the project from start to finish someone who is able to understand, relate to, and coordinate between the project's many facets. This project manager is responsible for everything required to ensure the project's success, whether directly or indirectly. It's important to note that a project manager is not like a typical hierarchical line management role. Rather, they can best be viewed as the center of everything relating to the project. Let's look at an illustration. As you can see from this illustration, the project manager acts as a focal point where different aspects of the project come together. The project manager is responsible for coordinating project activities 
as well as developing and maintaining the scope and timetable of the project. The four arrows represent the relationships between the project manager and various groups typically associated with project completion. It is not uncommon for the project manager to be in both a supervisory position and at the same time subordinate to stakeholders or upper management affiliated with the project. The project manager must also be able to forge productive relationships with any internal and external elements, such as other departments and outside vendors or contractors over which he or she may have no direct authority. A project plan is basically a blueprint charting the entire project's expected progress from start to finish. A project plan can contain as little as a framework for the project or spell out every minute detail. In other words, it can be either detailed or summarized, as needed to successfully manage the project itself. A good project plan effectively balances all of the components of scope, time, cost, quality, and outcome expectations while minimizing costly errors by adequately anticipating and addressing problems early on which could negatively impact the project's success. A typical project plan formalizes the following. Agreements between the employer, the project team, contractors, and anyone else affiliated with the project. The project's primary purpose. Organizational, institutional, and project goals and objectives as to their relationship to the project's outcomes. Scope and expectations. Roles and responsibilities of project staff affiliates. Assumptions and constraints. Quality management approach. Project management approach. And policies and procedures that must be adhered to for the project's success. Before beginning to write your final project plan, consider performing a factor analysis. Factor analysis is a disciplined technique used for investigating, analyzing, and understanding a project prior to making any formal commitments. A factor analysis allows you to consider all of the relevant system requirements and environmental conditions necessary to ensure the project's success before finalizing any commitments. In other words, by examining where a project's many variables are interdependent upon one another, you will gain a better understanding of the project's importance, as well as which variables are most likely to hinder or help complete the project. An example of one such factor to consider would be looking at the client's commitment level toward seeing the project to its completion. Another would be taking a look at your organization's current level of technology and determining its capabilities in relation to the project's expected specifications. When performing a factor analysis, there are at least 10 areas you should consider. Definition, scope. Understanding the project's primary purpose, as well as listing all of the major functions and deliverables expected to complete the project, is very important. Likewise, by determining why the project was created and what mission it fulfills within the organization is crucial for determining the project's overall relevance and what support the project has. Resources. A factor analysis attempts to identify all of the necessary resources needed for the project's success. This includes monetary, technical, personnel, or special materials needed. Time. You should calculate the actual work time needed to complete the project as well as the overall timeline. Procedures. Most projects are subject to special policies and procedures to ensure proper outcomes are realized. Here you should catalog all of the relevant organizational requirements, as well as any regulatory policies or mandates, financial reviews, special methodologies, or any other requirements. Environment. Explain the project's environmental factors that may have spurred the project or could hinder its completion. This could include geography, culture, political environment, available technology, and so on. Change. The factor analysis should take into account all changes, 
procedural, policy, etc., that will be necessitated and implemented because of the project and any potential issues or risks associated with these changes. An effective change management plan should then be developed to adequately address these issues. Communications. A good communication strategy is key to the success of a project. However, there are many factors, such as geographical location, for instance, that can inhibit this process. Determine the best communication strategy for the project, considering any routine meetings, reports, presentations, and such needed to keep the project on track. Be sure to catalog any foreseeable obstacles that will affect communication efforts and plan accordingly. Commitment. For a project to succeed, it must gather momentum and maintain a level of support from key proponents capable of driving the project to completion. Analyze and determine the degree of support for the project from sponsors, users, and stakeholders. Are they willing to commit to seeing the project through to completion? What factors are currently driving support for this project? Will those factors still be in play as the project moves forward? What's at stake if the project is not completed? Expectations. What positive outcomes can you expect from completion of this project? What goal or objective will completion of the project satisfy? To what measurable degree? Risk. Summarize any potential obstacles that will hinder project completion. Additionally, Take time to analyze the risks associated with not completing the project or portions of the project. Completing the factor analysis will help you gain further insight into the many different facets needing consideration and will go a long way toward completing a thorough project plan. A typical project plan should have at least eight components, each of which is essentially a work product resulting from subtasks. Introduction. The introduction of the project plan should state the overall purpose of the project. Ask yourself to define the mission you are trying to accomplish. The project description typically provides a short statement about what the plan hopes to accomplish, as well as a brief background synopsis of how the project was originally derived. What motivated or demonstrated the need for the project? what background history led up to this project being created. Goals and Objectives A goal is a specific and desirable achievement that the organization chooses as a focus in support of its overall mission. Goals tend to be long-term, while objectives, on the other hand, tend to be short-term targets, typically 12 to 24 months or less, of defined, measurable achievement. The expected project goals and objectives should be clearly defined within the project plan. Reaffirm project objectives by establishing the motives driving the project and determine how completing the project will achieve specific aims for the organization or institution and its mission as a whole. Essentially, you should be able to identify the specific results to be realized and the benefits to be achieved and establish a desirable and realistic time frame for meeting the project objectives. A visible and reliable method for monitoring and measuring progress toward meeting these objectives will also need to be devised. Before we begin discussing scope, it's important to note that in project management there are two distinct definitions for scope. Project scope refers to the work needing to be accomplished to deliver a product, service, or result with the specified features and functions as outlined. Product scope can be defined as the features and functions which characterize a product, service, or result. Note that project scope defines a more work-oriented approach, while product scope focuses on the functional requirements of a deliverable. Defining the scope of a project is often neglected. However, properly defining the scope in detail is critical to properly planning a schedule, budget, and the needed resources to ensure successful completion. With that said, having clearly and concisely defined the scope of a project is key to its success. The project scope 
should describe, from a quantitative perspective, what is to be accomplished. Defining the scope aids in establishing realistic work plans, budgets, schedules, and expectations. Should identified work arise that falls outside of the defined scope, it becomes the project manager's responsibility to determine whether the additional work falls out of the project's scope and should be deferred, or whether the scope of the project should be expanded to include the work. Expanding the project scope would mean making formal changes to the work plan, resource allocation, budget, and or schedule. Scope definition. You will want to detail what work will be done and what resources will be included in the project. We call this scope definition. If the project is part of a phased approach, it may include deliverables from the previous stage and the scope may be characterized by which objects will be further defined and developed. Focus on the components identified within the project plan scope definition. Define the scope of the project by determining which criteria constitute maintenance of the product. This will help prevent the occurrence of scope creep, a term that refers to the incremental expansion of the scope of a project as when requirements are introduced that were not part of the initial planning. Scope creep is often due to inadequate planning or a failure to consult all of the stakeholder parties during the project's initial stages and it can result in costly financial and scheduling overruns. The deliverable scope of the project is a complete listing of the products and or other deliverables expected. These could include tangible items as well as specific results resulting from the project's completion. Every project plan should have a deliverable scope. It should include a list of these deliverables, oftentimes with more detailed explanations of each deliverable which may be contained within the project plan's appendix. When writing a deliverable scope for a project plan, be sure to contain the following for each deliverable. Name and a description. Purpose behind creating the deliverable. Major tasks producing or updating the deliverable. Expected audience. Sign-off participants. Remember to include any project management deliverables, including the project plan itself. Milestones represent the timeline or temporal scope of the project. Here you describe significant project accomplishments that will act as primary checkpoints marking the project's progress. These are generally points marking the completion of a specific activity or group of activities and resulting in a significant product or result, such as equipment delivery, material delivery, review meeting, or approval checkpoint. Not every task completion date in the project will be a milestone, but every milestone should be tied to a deliverable. Include the estimated time of completion for each milestone. Milestones are targets that should be met. If they are not met, it is likely that the project will not finish on time. Ensure that milestones are clearly identified in the timeline and project plan. Assumptions. Assumptions are necessary if we are going to make decisions about the future. They help us fill the gaps where facts are lacking, but are not always proven to be true. Use this section to describe any assumptions made about the project or its completion related to items such as available resources, scope, expectations, schedules, etc. Assumptions should be specific and measurable. Be sure to differentiate between assumptions made about the project and real facts that can be proven. For instance, when determining the project's hiring budget, you can assume from the facts you are currently given whether or not you will be able to fully staff the project throughout its duration, or perhaps whether cutbacks will be needed at a later phase of the project due to projected budgetary constraints. Constraints. Describe and plan for any limitations under which the project will need to be conducted. This could include any operational or environmental parameters, such as projected timeframes, deadlines, available funding, staff skill levels, or resource availability that may or may not impede the project's progress. 
related projects. Other projects can be potentially impacted by your project as well. Other projects may be dependent on deliverables associated with your project, or your project may affect the parameters of other projects. You should address these issues and ensure managers of these related projects should be kept in the communication loop on all matters related to your project. Critical Dependencies Likewise, it is also essential that the critical dependencies between related tasks and subtasks, whether internal or external to the project, be understood to ensure that tasks are sequenced correctly so you can maximize efficiency and so that the project can run smoothly, minimalizing unwanted downtime. Determine the relationship between work performed in a given task or subtask with the work performed in other tasks or subtasks. Identify the predecessor and successor activities. Identify any tasks within a related project on which this project is dependent and describe each relationship. Quality management is the process of ensuring that the project's objectives adequately meet expectations. Your project plan should identify and list the methods you plan to use to ensure your deliverables are up to snuff and how that methodology aligns appropriately with any industry standards or regulations which must be followed. This would include any project reviews or inspections you plan to conduct, along with any testing or test scripts, and where in the process each should occur to ensure quality guidelines are met. You should also define the specific and measurable standards used in determining acceptable results. Also list and describe any special tools, skills, and techniques that will be needed on the project to perform the testing and ensure positive outcomes, including any specific hardware or software packages. Some such packages would include project management software, measuring devices, or testing software. Lastly, define the specific quality management roles and accompanying responsibilities that individuals will be assigned to ensure quality is adequately met on the project. Project Management Effective project administration is key to success. Ground rules need to be set into place outlining acceptable standards for providing effective administration, communication, and project oversight. Identify the administration policies agreed to by the project team that govern the way in which the project will be conducted. Such standards include status reporting, staff meetings, product review acceptance criteria, and celebration criteria. Describe which standards, if any, already exist within the organization and are appropriate for the project. Such standards typically include project model management, technology, documentation management and training techniques, naming conventions, quality assurance, and testing and validation. These may be standards that are recognized and embraced as an industry standard or that are specific to your organization. Define and describe the roles and responsibilities of each team member along with the overall communication plan to ensure that team members understand what is expected of them. Describe the mechanism for communicating responsibilities across the project team and within the organization at large. Be sure to develop a strategy that promotes communication among team members. Consider using a directory of all team members and liaisons. Identify how progress on the project will be determined and how it will be communicated to those involved in or impacted by the project. Identify how often status reports will be distributed and to whom. Determine how often progress meetings will be held and who is expected to attend. Approvals. Unexpected situations and setbacks are bound to occur. Likewise, project tasks need some sort of approval process to ensure quality checks have been sufficiently completed to move to the next phase. It's important to develop an efficient approval strategy for monitoring and moving the process forward and can also anticipate and adequately address any unexpected variations and modifications that become necessary during the project's life cycle. 
We have already discussed in detail the steps involved in selecting an EHR system that's right for your practice or institution. Now let's review the steps for implementation as a whole. Stage 1. Assessment. Your project team, represented by a variety of physicians, staff, and stakeholders with the appropriate skills, is formed, and regular team meetings are conducted. These team meetings continue throughout the six stages. The assessment stage helps prepare for the implementation by completing a practice readiness assessment. This includes a profile of the organization in terms of goals and priorities, and an assessment of IT, healthcare, and business and office personnel. A hardware requirement analysis is also carried out at this stage. Step 2. Planning. The practice data collected from the previous stage is carefully reviewed. Based on this, the electronic health records implementation goals are defined and improvement opportunities are identified and targeted. Step 3. Selection. The EHR system's requirements are defined, including configuration needs, and a selection process and details of the goals that are achieved based on the selection. The EHR system is also selected in this stage. Step 4. Implementation. Once the EHR selection has been made, a system implementation plan is developed with the vendor along with timelines. The implementation plan includes details on installing and configuring hardware and EHR software. A plan for migrating any old data over to the new system must also be devised, including any necessary database conversions in a matter that ensures data integrity. A staff training program is initiated and system testing follows. Then, the staff begin to use the EHR system. Throughout the process, a journal of experience and processes is maintained. Step 5. Evaluation. A post-implementation review is conducted and the journal of experience and processes is updated. The performance measures created during the planning phase are validated and an improvement plan is prepared. Step 6. Improvement. The EHR is then modified to resolve issues encountered during the evaluation phase. Improvements are carried out as defined in the improvement plan. There are special concerns for implementing an EHR project in smaller settings. First, it's important to understand that implementing an EHR is a time-consuming process that cannot be rushed. Smaller practices are more often than not limited in their resources, creating additional pressures which can hinder EHR adoption rates. Consider using a step-by-step -step approach for implementation, particularly after the EHR rollout begins, allowing time for staff to become familiar with the new technology at their own pace. For a single physician practice, you should expect the project to span from 12 to 18 months at least from start to rollout, or longer for practices with multiple physicians. Implementation of your EHR should be driven by the long-term goals you wish to achieve. You should begin by evaluating your practice and looking for deficiencies or areas where improvement can improve quality of care and efficiency. Special areas to consider could include coding, medication management, quality improvement, patient satisfaction, and so on. There are many goal-setting tools and resources available. MedQuick, an online goal-setting tool hosted by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, is just one such tool which may prove valuable, but there are many more. Just like large practices, you should take care to include a thorough workflow analysis in your project plan, particularly when it comes to scheduling, triaging, patient registration, referral management, visit documentation, orders, result management, protocols, treatment plans, clinical decision support, copayment capture, claims processing, and billing. Other areas should be considered as well. 
Special consideration should also be given in office environments where the transition to an EHR coincides with a transition from a paper tracking system to a paperless tracking system. In a smaller practice, you will probably need to focus more on upfront and long-term costs associated with choosing an EHR. Establishing a budget early on will help guide you toward selecting an appropriate EHR vendor. For instance, many smaller practices opt for a hosted EHR solution over an in-house solution, which may help offset costs for maintenance and support of the EHR infrastructure. In smaller practices, building a partnership between your practice and the EHR vendor is just as important, if not more so. You will be more dependent on the vendor providing technical expertise and even on-site support during and after the implementation process has begun. Choose a vendor that's a good fit for your practice and understands your goals and will work with you to develop a project plan that not only focuses on the technical requirements and deliverables, but also encompasses the project plan as a whole, including time for analysis, staff training, and testing. Choosing a vendor should not rest on cost analysis alone. We've covered a lot of concepts in today's lecture. Let's summarize the important points. Project management is the process of carefully planning and organizing efforts for accomplishing a specific and usually one-time objective. A project manager is directly responsible for activities of all participants, tasks, and deliverables. However, the project manager may not necessarily be the top level of the hierarchical management structure. Projects have major phases designed to move the project along in a logical and timely progression. A factor analysis is often done before the project begins to help determine scope resources and time needed to be successful. A project plan is then developed and typically should have at least eight components, each of which is essentially a work product resulting from subtasks. The project plan helps identify specific details including workflow, teams, communication, and approvals needed to ensure project success. EHR project implementations follow similar patterns as many other projects, including six typical stages – assessment, planning, selection, implementation, evaluation, improvement. Special considerations such as limited staffing and financial resources should be considered when developing EHR's project plans for smaller practices. That concludes today's material. A lot of concepts were covered here, so take additional time to digest these concepts before moving on to the next unit.